Hi, Art 100 class. Welcome to lesson four, which is on the theme of isolation. In line with that theme, I did not make an effort to do my hair. Usually for these videos, I try to make an effort, but here is my true staying at home hairdo um, during the summer of 2020 when most of us are pretty isolated. Here also is a dog who looks a little bit like my dog looking out the window. That's also been happening a lot these days. Speaking of hair, when it comes to images of isolation, you actually have kind of a hair theme. Check out this very strange painting by William Blake of Nebuchadnezzar. So he and I are, you know, about the same hairdo wise right now, aren't we? This is a really odd, haunting, interesting image, I think. I hope you like it too. William Blake was somebody who wasn't particularly affiliated with an art movement at the time. He was actually seen as sort of just a strange outsider by a lot of his peers. But nowadays, people look at his work and connect it up to some of those themes that are part of the romantic style that we talked about a little bit in a previous lesson. You'll learn more about that here. But I just wanted to show it to you to start because look at how this figure is crouched here, how his hair has grown, his beard is dragging in the earth, his feet and hands are starting to transform into like a bird's talons, you know, like the claws that birds of prey have. He looks like he is turning into an animal. And that's actually part of a Bible story. So Nebuchadnezzar, or Nebuchadnezzar, I think some people pronounce it that way, he was a figure who in the Old Testament was punished for being too prideful and forced to basically live like an animal in the wilderness. I mention him here because this is a vision of isolation that I think we see a lot in contemporary culture. Not necessarily Nebuchadnezzar, but this idea of people whose hair have grown out, who've become kind of out of touch with the things that we think of as making us human or making us feel human. It's not just isolation as a punishment where we see this. And let me disappear here. Here is another really interesting hair example. So there's a figure from the Bible you might know from the New Testament, Mary Magdalene, who was a close person to Jesus, and she shows up in various ways in the New Testament. But one of the things that happened in her story is that she ends up being isolated in the wilderness for decades. Um, this was a sort of self-isolation. She went to repent and live separately from society. And in the images of her, we often see her with just long hair like we see with Nebuchadnezzar here. But there are some images, particularly from the medieval period, we see two of them here from the 1400s, where they interpreted it as her being like furry like an animal. So look at her body here, all covered in hair here as well. So this is like quarantine hair taken to the extreme. I think she's making it look good though. So I know it seems like this lesson is going to be all about hair. I swear it isn't. That's just how I started. But what we'll be looking at is images of isolation like these two or this one, this really quite famous, you've probably seen it, very kind of lonely feeling images, image of people feeling or people seeming very kind of alone in a city at Hopper's Nighthawks. So we'll be looking at images of isolation like these. And then we'll also be looking at images that were made by artists who were in isolation. So Van Gogh, for example, who made this and many other really pretty amazing paintings while he was isolated in an asylum. Or much more disturbing images like this beautiful painting by Golsan Karmustafa which she made based on her memories of being in prison for political crimes, uh, so-called political crimes in Turkey, in a women's prison where you would also see children imprisoned. After she got out, she made these paintings based on her memories. 
So we'll be looking at images of isolation and then images by people who are isolated. And I think it'll be pretty interesting, especially given our current situation. There's more images than just these. This is just a little bit of a sampling to let you know what we'll be talking about. The things that you'll do this week are, as usual, you'll have readings and videos that you'll take notes on. There's a little bit less this week, not a lot less, just a scotch less, maybe one less image, um, but you might notice it's a little bit shorter. That's just because I ran out of time. You will also have a study guide to review. So you'll take notes and pay attention to the readings and videos and the study guide will help guide you in those notes and let you know really like what you'll need to write down. Then you have a quiz to take as usual. And then you have an assignment to complete at the end this time you'll have similar options to last time where you'll get to make an artwork or you'll get to make a plan for an artwork so you have two different art options and then you also have a written option i'm also adding a video option this time so if you wanted to record a video like i'm doing here instead of writing the essay that would also be something that you could do so that's what you've got coming up there is one more thing that i wanted to just draw your attention to which is that your final project instructions are online on our Canvas course. I have them posted at the very bottom of the modules section. So if you click on modules, you'll see, just scroll to the bottom, you'll see that it's there. The final project isn't due till week six, you know, the very end of the semester, but that's going to be a pretty busy week, I think. And the end of the semester has a way of sneaking up on us. So it would be great, I think, if you were able to work on it little by little, or at least look it over in advance. So check that out when you have time. And that is all I've got to say. I hope you're doing well, and um, I hope you have a wonderful week.